Tasha Hao and welcome to the seventh day of the 12 day of fried rice. My name is Brandon, the Gun Black Chef. Yesterday, we cooked something totally borderline experimental and the result was not as satisfactory as we would have wanted. So today, we decided to go back to the basic in order to redeem ourselves. And what better way to do so than to travel to China and cook one of their most famous fried rice dish, the luxurious Jiangzhou fried rice, a delicacy only served to kings and queens in the past. The first thing we want to do is to prep our crispy pork belly overnight. In the interest of saving time, there's a very in-depth cooking recipe for this pork belly on YouTube, which I will link in the description. This is an amazing and essential ingredient, so make sure you have it on hand before cooking. I mean, just listen to the sound it makes when I scratch my knife along the meat. Make sure to also preserve the fat that came out from the meat. We will use it for cooking later. Alternatively, you can also substitute with a piece of ham. To prep the meat is very simple. Just cut them into tiny bite-sized cubes. Set them aside on a small place as we move on to our next ingredient, which will be the usual cutting of the garlic and shallot. Once again, we will cut them into small chunks. Next up, we will work on our Chinese sausage, otherwise known as the lap su. Unlike the typical Western sausage, these sausages are small and thin. But what they lack inside, they make up for their intense flavor. Size isn't everything after all. However, despite saying that, we want to cut these sausages into very small cubes as well. Once they are cut, we transfer them into another plate and set them aside. It's time that we work on our chicken and shrimp. We want to cut our chicken meat into small chunks like the other ingredients. Into the bowl, we dump our chicken and shrimp. To that, we will add our seasoning consisting of garlic powder, black pepper, cayenne pepper, five spices, and for the high IQ Rick and Morty fan out there, a packet of Szechuan sauce. Mix all of that together and set aside for five minutes. Next up, we will begin our work on these dry up mushrooms. Submerge them in the hot water and left aside for five minutes. Transfer them to paper and let them dry. Once they are dry, we will follow the same procedure and cut them into small side chunks. Next up, we will create the sauce for our fried rice. This is the most important element to create that iconic taste that this fried rice is well known for. Into our cup, we'll add two teaspoons of the MSG, a teaspoon of sugar, and another teaspoon of the five spices, a tablespoon of the soy sauce, oyster sauce, sesame oil, and most importantly, the Shaoxing Chinese cooking wine. Give everything a stir and set aside. Everything is wrapped up now, but before we start, let's take a moment and appreciate all our ingredients. Now, this next tip I offer is very important, so make sure to listen carefully. It is very crucial for this recipe that you cook all of the ingredients separately before adding them to the fried rice. We learned it the hard way from yesterday cooking, but making an honest mistake means that you are human. After all, every mistake is an opportunity to learning and improving oneself. Unless you have Asian parents and failure is not an option. You doctor yet? For these Chinese sausage, you do not want to cook them with any oil inside the pan and just let them sizzle in their own fat. Once they are done cooking, transfer them to the plate. And dump in our next row of ingredients. Let the chicken and shrimp cook for a while until they are firm before adding in our mixed vegetable and mushrooms. Traditional Zhangzhou fried rice requires a mix of pea and carrot, so make sure to have at least these two in the pan. Keep everything a stir to incorporate them together before taking them out of the pan. For the rice, we will proceed with the usual foundation of the garlic and shallot. Once they are fragrant, we will add in our leftover jasmine rice. On top of that, we will crack and add two eggs into the pan. Give everything a good mix until the rice is coated with the yellow color from the eggs. Some of you may have noticed I am using a spatula and pressing down hard on the rice instead of my usual green forceps thingy. You might be wondering, Brandon, why using forceps in the first place? It's not even proper tool for cooking fried rice. And you are right, the spatula helps make it easier to push down and break the rice and keeping them from clumping up. I just happen to refer the forceps more because I usually cook with the chopstick 
and since this white boy here don't have them, I just use the forceps instead. But regardless of the tool you use, once the rice is ready, we will insert our cooked meat and vegetables. Follow up with our homemade Zhangzhou fried rice sauce and two teaspoons of MSG. For the garnish, we will add our chopped leek and a sprinkle of black pepper. Keep everything a strong and heavy final mix. Admire the beautifully cooked fried rice and take a long, good sniff to experience the amazing yet nostalgic smell of the happy childhood back in Vietnam. Talk to me when you talk to me. Yeah! Onto our plate, we will lay out delicious Zhangzhou fried rice and to top it off, some parsley for decoration. A size of cucumber for that refreshing crunch is optional but nonetheless welcome. And there you have it, Zhangzhou fried rice, or as we say in Vietnamese, Gong Chien Yung Zhou. I have eaten this dish a lot when I was a kid, and I have fond memory of my mom waking up early and cooking it for me every morning. Growing up and learning how to cook it myself, I finally understand how my mom felt. The flavor is amazing. All these ingredients, even though random, when added together alongside with the sauce and the egg fried rice, create a harmonious dish that truly befits the title of King of Fried Rice. In the future, I want to also cook this fried rice every day for my children and I sincerely hope that you guys will also be interested in cooking it for yourself. And that's it for the 7th day of the 12th day of fried rice. 7 is a lucky number after all, so we hope we manage to redeem ourselves from the yesterday nightmare with this dish. Tomorrow we will cook yet another Chinese fried rice dish. But until then, like always, I hope you all have a very nice day. Build yourself some model kit, cook yourself this delicious Zhangzhou fried rice to pair it up with, and I will see you all next time.